Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to JP Barbecue. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Today, we are doing picanha on the rotisserie. First time for everything. We're gonna see how this picanha comes out doing the JP style. And you guys stay tuned. And of course, check it out. So I ordered this meat from this company called Grand Western Steaks. They're a company located here in uh, in Florida. And what came in this box is not one, but two USDA Prime picanhas. And these bad boys, I have been waiting for them to thaw out because they look absolutely marvelous. And I am going to do them on the Weber rotisserie. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this picanha roughly three fingers thick. And I know what you're thinking right now. You're, you're seeing me cut this meat against the grain and you're, you're thinking I'm messing up. But what you don't know is that we're gonna put this on the skewer. Anytime you put picanha on the skewer, you wanna make that first cut against the grain. That way when you put it on the skewer and you start cutting it off the skewer, it will also be cutting against the grain. This is gonna turn out perfect. These picanhas look absolutely beautiful. Even the little piggy on my cutting board seems to be smiling a little bit harder. Just take a look at this mountain of a meat. It's gonna come out absolutely gorgeous. And if you watched this far so far, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right there and click that bell. Here's what we're gonna use to season. We are gonna use JPAP, which is a perfect blend of salt, pepper, and garlic, perfectly balanced to bring out the rich flavor of the cut of meat. You wanna make sure that you get every bit of meat covered up, especially the top and the sides. Don't worry about the fat cap. That side don't need none. And guys, season to your liking. You wanna put more, put more. Wanna put less, put less. But most definitely do not forget about the little guy at the end. He needs some loving too. Here's what we're using for the second picanha, my new JP steak seasoning. What makes this rub so great is that it has a hint of coffee in it. In fact, it is the third ingredient on the list, so it's up there as far as a main ingredient. Coffee on steak works two ways. First, it works as a tenderizer, making the meat softer and enhancing the moisture of the meat by creating a sealed crust of flavor. Second, the acidity levels of coffee replicate tannins in wine, which allow a more amplification of flavor. And just like the first picanha, get it everywhere. If you're interested in any of these rubs, visit the website, jp-bbq.com. Now to show you what they look like, JPAP on one picanha and JP steak on the other. You got two great seasonings on the best cut of meat that's out there. I say it's the best cut of meat, but to be truthful, this is the first time I try picanha. My favorite cut of meat is the bone and ribeye. Now that I have had. I wonder how they would compare. If you would like to see me do a comparison between a bone and ribeye and a picanha, leave a comment below and I'll see if I can make it happen. Either way, I'm going to enjoy this cut of meat. Just look at it for crying out loud. It's USDA prime cut of picanha. We can't have a great cut of meat without having a great sauce to go with it. And for this, I decided to keep it as original as possible. I'm going with the traditional Argentine sauce called the chimichurri with my own little twist in it, of course. I'm gonna be using simple ingredients, parsley, garlic, red chili peppers, dried oregano, some JPAP, avocado oil, and red wine vinegar. Start off by ripping the leaves off the parsley. You don't want the stems. Finally, chop your parsley, and it may take you a couple of passes at it. But once you got it to this consistency, then you're good to start placing it in a glass jar. Take your four cloves of garlic, and you wanna finely chop them, kind of mince them very, very fine, almost to the same consistency as the parsley. Once you got that, Get your two red chili peppers and do the same thing to those. Cut them into long little strips and start cutting them into small little cubes about the same size. Teaspoon of dried oregano, a teaspoon of JPAP, three quarters cup of this avocado oil. And I had to break out the funnel because I got scared I might go, go spill this all over the place. You know, this stuff ain't cheap. And also two teaspoons of the red wine vinegar. Once you got all the ingredients in there, 
give it a good mixing. Mix it very well and your chimichurri sauce is done. So here's how we're going to set up our Weber. We are going to put a drip pan in the middle and the two charcoal baskets on the side for indirect heat. Get your favorite fire starters. I'm using these fire and flavor 100% biomass fire starters. And at this time, I'm setting them in the bottom of the basket. Now, there's no better way to, to light them. You can put them inside of the basket. You can put them outside of the basket. I've actually done them both ways. It's up to you how you want to light them. Now, I am using BMB lump charcoal. I really like this charcoal. Seems to burn hotter and longer. Light your starters from the bottom and wait roughly 20 minutes till your charcoal is fully lit. Once fully lit, split the charcoal between the two baskets, set your rotisserie, set your motor for the spit, and your Weber is ready. Take a look at this huge chunk of meat. Seasoned just right and with a fat cap on top that is going to render into the meat, it can only get better from here. Now that we got the meat seasoned, the Weber fired up and the chimichurri sauce waiting on us, we can now start to skewer the picanha. Here's the reason why we cut the meat against the grain. When we fold it over and skewer it, the final cut will also be against the grain and that is how you want to slice it in order to achieve maximum tenderness. At this point, if you feel you need to add a little more JPAP, go for it. This is going to come out freaking amazing. Now, don't do what I did and forget to install the skewer meat forks. Uh, you're going to need them in order for the meat to stay put and rotate properly. Would you just look at this? It is absolutely delicious looking, like something from a Brazilian steakhouse. At this point, put your skewer in the rotisserie and roughly cook it for about 20 minutes or until you reach an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. It should look something like this. Just freaking amazing. Hey guys, I think this picanha is about done. I'm shooting like I'm doing a regular steak. I'm trying to hit maybe 130, 135 and not get it above that. Uh, so let's check it out and see what it looks like. And this thing is super hot. Look at that beautiful cut of, of meat. Let's see if I can take a little bit off of here and just give it a little sampling. Oh yeah, all the way down. Still plenty of red on the inside. Looks good, guys. Looks really, really good. Here we go, let me cut some more off. That looks good, look at that. And I even got some uh, homemade chimichurri. Let's give this chimichurri a try with the meat. Look at this. Oh, wow. Just look at that. That looks absolutely gorgeous. Let's give it a try without the chimichurri. Oh, mm. mm, wow. That is so freaking awesome. That is the best piece of meat I've ever eaten. I got this cut of meat from Grand Western Steaks and they were running a special and I think the coupon code was uh, just add fire or something like that. But I'm gonna put a link down below so you guys can go check them out. And these are uh, picanha cut and it's a USDA prime. It's not Wagyu, but it's, it's damn good. I'm gonna try a little bit of this chimichurri on this cut of meat. Make this homemade chimichurri. Look at this. Just look at that. Doesn't that look good? Oh my gosh, let's put that on this cut of meat. Here we go, guys. Oh my gosh, that is super, super good. Heck, I don't think I need any chimichurri, but the chimichurri just, hmm, takes it to the whole other level. Oh my gosh. Guys, I've just about done every kind of rotisserie on here. 
I've done the, I've done the Boston bug. I've done some chicken. And now I did some picanha. This rotisserie kit, oh my gosh, it's wonderful to have because it's so versatile with different types of meat that you can cook with it. If if uh, if you don't if you have a Weber kettle and you don't have one of these, you don't know what you're missing, guys. This thing is a fantastic piece of equipment. It, it's 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 so good, and this meat <laughs> from Grand Western Steaks, oh my God, mm. tender, just tender. Oh, eat some more. Mm. Oh my God, but. Mm really really good i'm gonna get this back in there that way it stays nice and warm hope i don't overcook it but it is really really good guys oh my gosh let me get some more of this chimichurri on here on this piece look at that that looks so good hmm that is really, really good. Anyhow, guys, that's it for the video. I got some more picanha to, to get cooked up because I got some family coming over. But uh, just want to say thanks to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Uh, if you get a chance, hit that subscribe button right there in the corner and give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Uh, if you're interested in any of the products that I have, I'll put a link to my website right here and it'll pop up right there jpbarbecue.com it's where i sell these products to help support this channel if you're interested in sponsoring a video or becoming a patreon come on board i'll put that link right there i'll give you guys a shout out um you know on your name i want to thank my patrons i got ben lee maria balderas sam santos leticia vallejo uh Billy Walsh, Brian Gutierrez, and I got a new patron this month. His name is Marco Romero. I appreciate you coming on board, Marco Romero, and uh, and helping support the channel. But besides that, guys, I want to say thanks again. I will talk to you guys later, and I will see you guys on the next cookout. Take care.